What do you make of the social yeah. media's influence in politics? Is this going to uh, impact the way we come across ideas and the way that we form new political ideas? Are we going to, for example, cancel each other out in this sort of endless noise? Uh, well, that's, that's, a good, that's a very good question because, I mean, if you think about the whole perception of the, of this, of the freedom movement, I mean, that which grew up kind of like around the, um, you know, countering the sort of the official COVID narrative, that was, for some reason, that was, that was actually perceived primarily as a conservative movement, if you think about it. But that was a kind of, that was a, if you think about it, that was a fallacy which was perpetuated by the mainstream media because there certainly were and are conservatives and libertarians in that movement. I mean, people like ourselves, I guess, who always resented the imposition of unnecessary authoritarian controls, you know, imposed by the globalist leftists. And and, but, and they actually use the, the far right slur against people like us and everyone else opposed to their policies. But for many in, in the freedom movement, uh, uh, this was the first time that they really understood the extent to which their governments were like lying to them. And they were using, of course, social media was the, the means of which they were communicating. Yeah, you know, was I mean, it was the only means that they could communicate with each other, essentially, would find new people. But the problem was, at the same time, many hardcore conspiracy theorists, which included many far left and socialists, right, actually jumped onto the freedom movement. You know, they, it was, they jumped on as a bandwagon. They weren't even there. Most of those people weren't there, you know, at the beginning. A lot of them, a lot of the, those hard leftists were actually saying, you know, we welcome lockdowns. We want to lock down harder and faster and all that sort of nonsense, right? And But they convinced a lot of the new people that everything they previously believed about the world was false. I, when I say new people, I mean new people within, the, you know, this freedom movement. For example, I know you got attacked for daring, for example, to come out in support of Ukraine because there seemed to be, you know, a consensus within the movement that the, that the Ukraine war was a globalist psyop you know, just like COVID and just like climate change. So people, you know, felt, well, this was also the same. And you couldn't, you, if you questioned it, you were somehow, your my, purity was sort of questioned. My, my big crime was refusing to say that the ex-head of the KGB or a KGB torturer, I refused to say that he was some kind of ambassador for freedom and, and civil rights. That was my yeah. crime. Uh, that's what was being obsessed about at the time. It's this weird new perspective where you have to view everything through one lens. It's almost a, a conservative version of the oppressor-oppressed narrative, where it's the good versus evil narrative coming through the conservative movement. 